Hey everyone, how's it going? Forrest here. Thanks again for tuning in to another installment of my complete analysis of all 389 Bach chorale harmonizations. Today we're going to be looking at Es Buigt de un Weissen Mund Voll, which roughly translates to The Mouth of Fools Does God Confess. Um, this is a pretty interesting chorale. Um, harmonically, actually when I say it's a pretty interesting chorale, there's really only one part right here that kind of... Um, kind of operates a little interestingly. Other than that, the harmony operates pretty straightforward. So outside of this section right here, this chorale is pretty much functionally, uh, it's functioning the way that you would expect it to. That being said, let's just hop right into the analysis. So two flats in the key signature, we have B flat on the starting uh, at the pickup and B flat at the end. So I think it's dis uh, safe to say that we are in the key of B flat major. We start on a one chord. We then have the same chord reiterated again. Oh, and also um, I swapped over to tenor clef to make it a little easier for me to read because this is the choral format that I'm used to reading, either this or a piano reduction. So I swapped over to tenor clef just so it was a little bit easier for me to read. So hopefully my note reading accuracy is going to be a little bit better um, now that I'm reading from a clef that I'm used to reading from because when I've done... Uh, you know, vocal ensembles and stuff, if I'm not reading from square note notation, because I did a lot of Gregorian chant ensemble when I was in university, um, I was reading from tenor clef. Bass clef was fine, but I was just used to reading the score with a tenor clef, so when I was reading this way, my mind was thinking treble clef for the tenor line. Um, but yeah, we have the same chord twice here. We now have C, C, E flat, and A, that is an A diminished triad in first inversion, or 7 6, passing 7th in the soprano, B flat, B flat, D, and F. We kind of have a 9 8 suspension going on. This is a B flat in first inversion. This is a D, not a B flat, sorry. G, B flat, D, B flat. That is a G minor triad in root position. That is a 6 chord right there. We then have F, A, E flat C, that is an F7 chord, and I think we've already modulated by this point. Right here we have a what seems to be an authentic cadence of some sort on E flat, and this is where the interesting thing happens. I'm going to put a question mark here because I'm not 100% sure if this is an authentic cadence. It does not sound as if the piece has modulated, but I don't really know how to justify the cadence otherwise. If we have modulated to the key of E flat, we have this sort of analysis. Six turns into three as G in the key of E flat is the median as opposed to um, in the key of B flat where it's the submediant. We then go to five seven, right? Because this is just an F seven chord with a four three suspension in the tenor. We then have B flat with the A flat here. So this would suggest five, the passing seventh in the tenor, and then one. So that's if we're analyzing it in the key of E flat. But I'm not 100% convinced that we've modulated. It doesn't quite sound like we've modulated, but I don't know. If we were thinking about this in the key of B flat, and I'll put it in parentheses, we have 5, 7, 1, 4. And this to me sounds like a modal cadence almost, like he's cadencing on the 4, but I don't know what to call it because it sounds like a, it, it almost sounds like a half cadence, like you would expect it to, um, uh, if this was a five chord, it would be totally fine, but it's a four chord. And I've never encountered a cadence like that. Um, so the only way that analytically I could make sense of it, um, at least something that I would have encountered in, in, in music that I've looked at is by saying that a modulation occurred. But that being said, we do immediately get a modulation back to B flat here. And I'll just go like that. And this E flat uh, now turns into four. And then we immediately go to E flat, A, C, F, where now this is a not a, a five, seven chord over E flat. So five, four, two. This is no longer the five of E flat, or rather this is a, f yeah, this is five, seven, Sorry, this is not just 5-7 by itself. This is 5-7 of 5. 
my apologies. Now this is no longer 5 7 to 5, this is 5 4 2 in B flat because we're now back in the key of B flat because we have A naturals. If we go to the next, we would expect a, um, a, a one chord in first inversion, which is what we get. We get D, B flat, F, and B flat, so 1 6, uh, B flat major triad over D. We then have A, E flat, F, and C another 5-7 chord inverted, this time in first inversion, so this is a 5-6-5. Five, five. And then we have B flat, D, F, and D. That is a one chord, a B flat major triad in first inversion. We then have E flat, B flat, G, and E flat. That is a root position E flat major triad, or a four chord. We then have F, A, F, and C. We have some counterpoint going on in anticipation for a cadence, which is a perfect authentic cadence in the key of B flat. So this is just a five chord. Four, five, one, B flat, D, F, B flat. Pretty common formula, four, five, and one. It doesn't get more standard than that. All right, moving on, we have B flat, D, F, and B flat. That is a, that's another one chord. And because it's moved over, we'll go ahead and reanalyze it. But if we look ahead, we have a perfect authentic cadence in the key of F major. This sounds like a, like a modulation occurs here. So we're going to go ahead and just call this B flat 4 in the key of F major. So it is now the subdominant. And if we move over, we already have E natural. So B flat, C, E, and G. That is a C major, tri uh, C major uh, sorry, a C7 chord over B flat. So that would be 5, 4, 2 as it's the 5 chord in third inversion. And we expect that to go to a 1-6 chord, so A, C, F, and A, which is an F major triad in first inversion, or 1-6. We then have G, D, F, and B flat, passing tone in the, in the soprano. That is a G minor triad, or a G minor 7 chord actually, so this is just 2-7 in root position. And then we have C, G, E natural, remember the E natural carries over it, and then G, and this is just a root position five chord. You have some passing tones going on. Actually, both of those are passing tones. And then we have another passing tone, so three of the voices are moving. And then we go to A, C, C, and F. That is a root, uh, sorry, a first inversion F major triad with some more non-chord tones going on in the lower voices. We then have C, G, C, and E. That is a five chord. And then we cadence on one again, another F major triad, F, A, C, and F. We then get another F chord spelled here, um, but we're, this is an F major triad. So uh, this actually, you know, we, re we would expect in the key of, actually we would expect F major in the key of B flat. So we can, say that we've modulated to B-flat here and just say this is now 5 in the key of B-flat. F is 5, the, f the dominant of B-flat. So this is just a revoiced F major triad. We have a passing 7th in the bass. We then have D, B-flat, F, and B-flat. That is a B-flat major triad in first inversion, or 1-6. Neighbor tone in the bass, passing tone in the alto. We have D, E, A, and C. I think this D is an accented non-chord tone, actually. So if we have C, E flat, A, and C, that is a seven chord in first inversion, an A diminished triad over C, which we would expect to go to one. We have B flat, F, B flat, and D, which is just a root position one chord. And then we have B flat, G, C, and E flat. That is a C minor seven chord over B flat. So that is two, four, two, um, because it's in third inversion. We have some passing tones in the lower voices, some more counterpoint in anticipation for a cadence, which sounds like um, imperfect authentic cadence because we don't have the uh, tonic in the uh, uh, soprano. B flat, F, C, D. I think this, well, this C is obviously part of a suspension. It's part of a 9-8 suspension. So it's just a one chord in root position here. So one, two, four, two, one. 
And then we go to an F major triad, F, A, again, part of another suspension, A, C, just a five chord, F major triad, and then we get a one chord again, B flat, F, B flat, D. Okay, we're getting ready for our final cadence, which is in the key of B flat major again, but this time it's perfect authentic. We have A, A, F, and C. That is an F major triad in first inversion, passing tone in the tenor. B flat, D, F, D, root position B flat triad, passing tones in the lower voices, G, B flat, G, E, that e or E flat rather. That is a that's an E flat major triad in first inversion, or E flat over G. So that's a four six chord in the key of B flat. We then have F, C, A, and F with a passing seventh in the soprano. That is a five chord. And we would expect that to go to one. B flat, C, F, and D. So the C is part of a suspension over the B. We have this cool two one suspension here where like a unison is actually happening between these two voices. So that's just a one chord. And then we have F, B flat, F, and C. Again, another suspension. It's this A we're looking at right here. It's just a five chord. And then we have, uh, again, another F chord, F, A, F, and C. And then we cadence on B flat. So it's a big 5-1 cadence with the B flat in the soprano, making it a perfect authentic cadence. Again, another quick chorale. Uh, I've been looking ahead uh, at the chorales that I'm going to be analyzing, and the majority of them are around this size, so I don't want to get super spoiled when the longer chorales get uh, reintroduced to the mix, but it's definitely been nice schedule-wise to only have to worry about these, uh, these smaller chorales. All in all, the only thing I'm not certain about is this section right here. I think my analysis is fine, um, but really, if anyone knows what a cadence is called when you cadence on four, as opposed to cadencing on with one going to four. I know four going to one is a plagal cadence, but this is like a reverse plagal cadence. One going to another chord is usually a half cadence, um, but traditionally it's a five chord or some type of dominant chord. It's, it's typically a five though, but when we see it as a four chord, it has a very modal sound to it. Um, and I kept listening to it and sometimes it sounded like a modulation. Most of the time it didn't. So I'm not 100% certain, but to keep my analysis consistent, it really did sound, uh, it, it, I, I, it, it really did sound like it didn't modulate, but the analysis reflects that it does because really I don't know what else to call this modulation. Um, so I think either analysis is right, either this B flat one in parentheses or this E flat one that I, that, that's on top of the parentheses. Um, either way, uh, it, it was a fascinating corral, if anything, just for that little section. And I look forward to tomorrow's analysis. Thanks for watching the video. Take care.